Most people don't necessarily like to help other people that are struggling. People tend to want to help the people, the person that's actually succeeding, not the person that's struggling. So the people that are struggling are left with what? Only HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And they're looking for whatever sign HaKadosh Baruch Hu can give them to let them know that he's still there and he's still watching. This is very much connected to not only our day-to-day -day lives, but also our Masoret that goes back thousands of years. And we'll take a short stop at Purim. There's a question that the sages ask and toil over. Why is an Akadosh Baruch whose name, the Yud K Vav K, or even Elohim, mentioned in the Megillah? The Megillah is a holy Megillah, it's part of our Tanakh. Why is an Akadosh Baruch whose name there? And of course, the sages say that Hashem was hiding himself and brought enough miracles to make even the most heretical, atheistic, lefty, liberal people realize that it was the hand of God that brought this salvation and nothing else. But the question is, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that we're going through all this difficulty, it means that he's the one that brought this difficulty. And if you brought the difficulty, why did you hide yourself the whole time? Why don't you let us know throughout this nearly nine-year period of the Megillah? Why don't you tell us through prophets? Why don't you tell us to different things that it's all under control? Why did you have the story start in such a strange fashion? That Chachamim say that if somebody came up with some of these facts that you see in the Megillah and brought it to people today and say, oh, this is going to have to do with this ultimate salvation. People would ask you, are you sick? The Gary Rebbe in his Chidusha uh, Arim on the Torah says, imagine somebody runs into the Bet Midrash, has hundreds of people in there, and screams out, the queen, the queen Vashti, refused the offer of the king to walk around naked in the celebration that he had, and therefore the king killed her. And this, this is the stepping stone necessary to bring the salvation to our people. The Gary Ribby would look at him and say, what would the average person say to this person? Would the average person, not average secular person, not average atheist, the average person inside the Bet Midrash that is obligated to expect Mashiach every day, what would he say to such a person with this news? Are you sick? You brought this porno into our Bet Midrash? This filthy mind of yours? You're saying that she was this day and she didn't wear that and she this and now you're connecting your filth to Mashiach. You should be ashamed of yourself. But that's what happened. But that's what happened. Rav Elazar Ashkenazi in the Sefer Yosef Lecha on Megillat Esther says that Megillat Esther and thereby our lives are difficulties. The calling of HaKadosh Baruch Hu that you can't hear. The voice that sometimes you can't see. Is very much just like Megillat still. And the answer for why a Kadosh Bahu's name is not in the Megillah. Where a person 
may not understand why HaKadosh Baruch Hu chose to keep his holy name outside of the Megillah. He may not understand why HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't speak through the prophets like he did in generations before and after. Perhaps he's not going to understand a lot of things. But Rav Ashkenazi says he will understand the story. Imagine a king. A king that has a son. And he loves a son. But that son did something really stupid. But something so stupid he can't just avoid it. He can't just ignore it. He can't continue to close his eyes. Something so horrible that it brings such shame to the king and creates such a desecration of the king's name that the king says, get out of here. Out of my castle. Of course, there's a big commotion. It's in the news. Front cover. Everybody knows this prince is out. And of course, some people support, some people are against, some people calling him, yo, fight for your own freedom and liberty. Don't tell no, don't let anyone tell you what to do. While others are saying, are you crazy going against the king? But the prince goes and continues, and of course, there's always some type of criminal out there that's trying to take advantage of it. Someone that knows that this prince, this prince is valuable. This prince has some stuff on him. This prince, I can benefit from him. And he plans, perhaps with his friend, who also started saying that God needs you. And they both plan to attack this prince. One from the right with the white beard, one from the left with the short black beard. Maybe even one with a podcast it's gonna come with them too we're gonna attack them we're gonna take them we're gonna do everything we possibly can to benefit the most out of this person now of course doesn't look good this poor prince doesn't even know what he's got coming to him he knows what happened between him and his father he can't really do anything about that it happened And he decided to go on his path. His father is angry at him, so much so he said, get out. He's on his path and he's all set getting out. But there's one thing, aside from the fact that the people he's associating with are criminals, there's one thing the prince doesn't realize. He doesn't realize that his father loves him much more than he loves his father that his father loves him so much that it's not possible for him to give him up but the same token he has to punish him he has to show him who's boss he has to show him something's got to change so he has to kick him out but that doesn't mean i love you i don't love you yeah, but how do you know what's going on with me? Ah, how do you know what's going on with you? When those criminals come for the attack, when those criminals come with the attack, one from the right, one from the left, and one from YouTube, they come from the attack. The king already has messengers get in the way destroy eliminate all enemies in such a fashion that you have no idea that it came from your father they're not dressed like soldiers do they don't have the name tags they don't have the typical tools that you had at the kingdom but nonetheless they are the king's servants And they're there to protect you. But they're going to make it look like it's a coincidence. They're going to make it look like it's a, they just happen to be here. They're going to make it look like it's a, you really are a lucky guy. But the truth is, 
It's the king that sent them. It's the king that sent them and made sure that they're there watching for when the criminals take such an offensive that you can no longer save yourself. And that's when they get involved. And of course, the king wants to know what happened and he keeps an eye out, but he can't have the prince know that he's watching. He wants the prince to miss him. He wants the prince to recognize him. He wants the prince to desire to be back. Because just like Rabbeinu Yonah says, if someone does not have that inner desire to serve a Kadosh Baruch Hu, to do tshuva, no Musar teachings could ever help him. Nothing could help him. There has to be an inner drive. There has to be. So all of the people that simply abandoned ship, God didn't abandon them. He still creates miracles for them, and he still works behind the scenes for them, just like he did at the time of Purim. But remember, the goal is not to rely on these miracles, but rather to hear God's voice from them. To make sure you realize that all of those different things that are happening to you, you don't just say, oh, I'm so lucky, but rather realize this too is my father. This too is the king. Perhaps it's time to come back home. Perhaps it's time to return. Let me know uh, what you think and make sure to share it because other people need to learn too.